For today's video, we will answer some math challenge given by one of our followers. And the question goes like this. Solve for the real values of A and B that satisfies this equation. A squared plus B squared equals 61 and A cubed minus B cubed equals 91. Now you can pause this video if you want to give this problem a try. Now suppose you pause this video. Now let's see if you got the correct answer. All right. So to answer this question, of course, let's focus on this equation. And we will use the fact that we can factor a cubed minus b cubed. So using this identity, if we have x cubed minus y cubed, this can be factored as x minus y multiplied by x squared plus xy plus y squared. So a cubed minus b cubed, we can factor this as follows. We have a minus b multiplied by a squared plus ab plus b squared. Now, notice we have here a squared and b squared. So let's rearrange some terms a little bit. And we know the value of a squared plus b squared. This is just given, which is equal to 61. So we can replace this with 61. Alright. So now, our second equation becomes a minus b multiplied by 61 plus ab equals 91. So now, our goal is to replace this first equation in terms of a minus b and ab. Now, to do that, we will use this identity. So if we square a minus b, we know this will give us a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So if we add 2ab on both sides, we get that the value, the other value of a squared plus b squared must be equal to a minus b raised to the power of 2 plus 2ab. Now we have a squared plus b squared right over here and we have the same thing. Therefore, we can say that a minus b raised to the power of 2 plus 2ab must be equal to 61. So let's do that. We have a minus b raised to the power of 2 plus 2ab equals 61. Now at this point, we need to let n must be equal to a minus b and m must be equal to a times b. So our equation becomes all a minus b becomes n like this and all a times b becomes m. Now let's focus on this equation. Now let's solve for the value of n and m and take note that n is just a minus b and this m is just a times b. All right now let's get the second equation and let's solve for the value of this m in terms of n and let's replace this to this equation and solve for the value of n. All right so now let's divide both sides by n so we have 61 plus m equals 91 over n. Next, subtract 61 on both sides. This will give us the value of m as 91 over n minus 61. And we need to replace this m with this equivalent, 91 over n minus 61. Now, we have a single equation with only one variable, which is n. So we can solve for the value of n. After that, we can now solve for the value of n. M. But take note, A and B here are all real numbers. Alright? Now keep in mind that. So now, what we're going to do is to distribute these two to 91 over N minus 61. If we do that, we get 182 over N minus 122. Now add 122 on both sides. This will give us 61 plus 122 is 180. Now, surprisingly, we have 182 and 183. Hmm. Alright, by the way, let's remove the denominator. Let's multiply all of this term by n. And if we do that, we get n cubed plus 182 equals 183 n. Now, let's rearrange some terms a little bit and let's equate this to 0. So, we have a cubic equation n cubed minus 183n plus 182 equals 0. 
And the question, how do we factor this cubic equation? Now, one thing to notice here is if we let n equals 1. So we have 1 cubed minus 183 times 1 plus 182. And notice if we add this together, this is just 0. Now, this tells us that n minus 1 is a factor of this cubic equation. Now, if you do, if you do the factoring, you get something like n minus 1 multiplied by n squared plus n minus 182. This is the factored form of this cubic, n cubed minus 183n plus 182 equals 0. Now, another thing to notice here is this negative 182 because if we multiply 14 times negative 13, this is simply equivalent to negative 182. And 14 plus negative 13, this is just positive 1. So we can factor this as follows. We have n minus 1 multiplied by n plus 14 multiplied by n minus 13. So our original cubic must be transformed into factored form as n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 13 multiplied by n plus 14 equals 0. Alright, now since it is equal to 0, so we can use the 0 property. So we can say that n minus 1 equals 0 or n minus 13 equals 0 or n plus 14 equals 0. So we have three cases. Now on the first case, if we solve for the value of n, we get that n equals 1. On the second case, we get that n equals 13. And on the third case, we get that n equals negative 14. Now, we have the values of n. So now we are now ready to solve for the value of m. Now we can choose from these two equations, the first equation and the second equation. But for me, the easiest way to get the value of m is using the second equation. So let's get the second equation. Now, let's have the first case when n equals 1. So if n equals 1 in this equation, we get something like 61 plus m equals 91. Now, subtract 61 on both sides to get the value of m, and sure enough, we get m equals 30. So if n is 1, m equals 30. Next, let's have the case when n equals 13. So if n equals 13, we have 13 multiplied by 61 plus m equals 91. Now divide both sides by 13, and 91 divided by 13, we get 7. So, and then subtract 61 on both sides. If we do that, we get m equals negative 54. So if n equals 13, m equals negative 54. That's the second case. And the third case, when n equals negative 14, and using the same method, we get that the value of m must be equal to negative 135 over 2. Now, we have three cases. n equals 1, m equals 30, up to n equals negative 14, and m equals negative 135 over 2. Now, let's start with the first case. So what will happen if n is 1 and m equals 30? So using this substitution a while ago, we know that n equals a minus b and m equals a times b. So this n, we can replace this with 1, and this m, we can replace this with 30, like this. And then, let's solve for the value of a in terms of b. So let's add b on both sides, so we get that the value of a must be equal to 1 plus b. And then, let's replace this a with its value 1 plus b. Then distribute this b to 1 plus b. We get b plus b squared. And then, let's rearrange some terms a little bit and equate this to 0. Now, b squared plus b minus 30, we can factor this as follows. b plus 6 multiplied by b minus 5 equals 0 because 6 multiplied by negative 5, this is 30, and 6 plus negative 5, this is just... 1, positive 1. 
Now, equate this to 0, and we get that the value of b must be equal to negative 6. And on the second case, we get that b equals 5. Now, set aside this result. We know that b equals negative 6 and b equals 5. Those are real numbers, so this value are accepted. Now, also take note that m equals a times b. And m is 30, so 30 equals a times b. So if b equals negative 6, if b equals negative 6, to make this 30, a must be equal to negative 5. And if this 5 is, this b equals 5 rather, so this a must be equal to 6. So we have now the solution, the real solutions in this problem. When a is negative 5, b is negative 6. When a is 6, b is 5. Alright, so we have now two pairs for a comma b. Now, how about on the other case? Let's have the second case. What if n equals 13 and m equals negative 54? So 13 equals a minus b and negative 34, which is m, equals a times b. Now, using the method we do a while ago, we get some equations like negative 54 equals b multiplied by 13 plus b, which is equivalent to just a. So if we add b on both sides, we get a equals b plus 13 or 13 plus b. All right. Now, rearrange some terms a little bit. We get a quadratic equation, b squared plus 13b plus 54 equals 0. Now, before we move on, let's check the discriminant of this quadratic equation. So the discriminant tells us if the discriminant is a negative number, therefore, we don't have any real solution in this question, in this quadratic equation. If the discriminant is positive, we have two real solutions. And if the discriminant is zero, we have one real solution. So let's check. So b squared minus 4ac. And if we do that, we get the discriminant equals negative 47. Now, this tells us, negative 47, tells us that we don't get any real number b that satisfies this quadratic equation. And if b is not a real number, a is also not a real number. Therefore, we don't get any real solution in this case. So this case is not accepted. It's not possible. Alright, so now let's go to the third case. Let's see if we get a real solution. So, on the third case, n equals negative 14. So, we have negative 14 equals a minus b. And m is negative 135 over 2. So, negative 135 over 2 equals a b. Now, using these two equations, we get some equations like negative 135 over 2 equals b multiplied by b minus 14. This is just the value of a. And rearrange some terms a little bit to get a quadratic equation. If we do, we get 2b squared minus 28b plus 135 equals 0. Again, let's check this discriminant. b squared minus 4ac. And if we do, we get the discriminant equals negative 296. Now, this negative number tells us that we don't get any real number b that satisfies this quadratic equation. So, b is not a real number, a is also not a real number. So, we don't get any real solution in this case. So the third case is also not possible. Therefore, the only real solution that satisfies this equation, a squared plus b squared equals 61, and a cubed minus b cubed equals 91, are follows. Negative 5 comma negative 6 and 6 comma 5. And as always, we are done.